Hey guys, Katie Trimmel here. So today we are going to talk about leads, picking up the proper lead with a colt um, and an older horse. If you're having trouble picking up the correct lead, I'm going to talk to you today about what you might be doing wrong and how to teach your horse to pick up the correct lead, um, the things you need to be doing, the control that you need to have over your horse's body. So I'm going to walk this horse around for a second while we gain some followers and we'll get into it. to do to pick up that lead. The horse is going to catch that lead with their hip first. So I need to lift the rib cage, lift the shoulders, get that hip in position to pick up that lead. They're going to catch it from the rear. The motor is where it all comes from. So gain control of the motor and you have control of the rest of the horse. So I'm not going to pick at their face. I'm going to sit to the outside. If I want this lead, I'm going to sit to the outside apply pressure with my outside leg that way I'm pushing my hip over freeing up my horse's inside hip and inside shoulder and the ribs so I've got this leg off of my horse so I'm tilting to the outside a little bit and I'm asking my horse to move its hip over that's going to free my horse to pick up that lead nice and smooth now I'm going to do it the other I'm going to do it from behind where you can see so I'm going to ask this purple leg to move over, applying pressure. Beautiful. You almost look at leads as side passing. Um, you know, I kind of feel like the horse can only pick up a lead as well as he can side pass. So the same thing, I'm going to ask her to move this hip over. Good. Very good. That's what I want. I want her, and as a baby, they're not going to be able to do it, but I want her to be able to maintain a straight line, asking her hip to move over without her head. Now, as a baby, it is no big deal, and this is how you start it. You're going to come around here and tilt your horse's head, asking them to move their hip. This is how you're going to teach them to do it. No big deal. You're going to work drills on just Pushing that hip over and walk a straight line. Push that hip over. Couple steps. Asking that purple leg to cross over. Good. Walk up here. Ask that purple leg to cross over. Good. And then let her go. Those are drills I do on all of my babies, preparing them to catch their lead. 
So that's every single day. I'm going to get off of that hip, lean to the outside. I'm going to ask that purple leg, step over, and then I'm going to quit. Good job. I'm going to do lots of squares like that, gaining that hip control. And as they get better, you can start to ask them to straighten that head out and give you that foot, give you that hip. That's exactly what you want. Take it really slow. Some horses get it just like that, and you're like, wow. A day or two of asking a horse to do it, and they've got it. Some horses can take weeks before they understand and get the concept of what you're asking for. Be very patient. Don't overwork it. Some horses I can do it on, you know, like I can get on her, and I can ask her to do something. She'll do it, and we're good. She retains that. I only need to do something two or three times, and she's got it. Some horses need to do it 30 times, and then they retain it. But be very mindful that you don't over drill. <clears throat> when she does it right, just like one step, when she moves over, I quit. Good job. That is your reward. The only way they understand a reward is to quit. That's how they retain things. So we want to make sure that we're quitting when they do it right. If they're doing it wrong, we keep doing it until they do it right and then we quit. They don't understand. Good boy. Good job. They don't get that. They could care less. So we have to show them they're doing it right by stopping. So. Now I'm going to work her at a trot. And I'm gonna come at you. So I'm gonna ask her to move her hip over. Good. So on the on the trotting subject, we're gonna talk about posting. So we all know. That we've all been told we have to post, we have to post, we have to post. And we know about posting. So, but how many people know why we post? And why we're supposed to be on the right leg or the left leg? Um, surprisingly, a lot of people don't know. I wrote English for many years, so I actually happen to know, but I didn't for a very long time. So we post rising to the outside leg. Most of us know that. And we're going to post rising to the outside leg, which means we are rising to the inside hip. We're freeing that hip up. One of the most important parts about trotting a horse and being on the correct diagonal, which is what leg comes up while you're posting, is we're freeing up that hip to catch that lead. If you're on the wrong diagonal, and if I'm trotting this horse right now and I want my horse to catch the left lead, and I'm coming up on this left shoulder, I am rising with the outside leg. So I'm hitting the ground when my horse's inside leg is hitting the ground. Okay, so I'm putting my weight on this inside leg, and that is making it very, very difficult for this horse to pick himself up and catch that lead. So trotting on the wrong diagonal can be a main reason horse isn't picking up the correct lead. So when you're trotting down the pin, if you're or in a circle, make sure that you're trotting and you're posting coming up on the outside leg. So the outside diagonal, because if you're coming up on the outside leg, you're rising on the inside hip. And that's what's going to free that hip to catch that lead because it's about the hips. So that is very, very important. Um, I'm going to show you on her. Focus on my diagonal and my pressure with my legs. So 
So I'm sure y'all are wondering, what is the biggest mistake that I see people make in the absolute biggest mistake? And I see this a lot. And um, I know when I was taught this, it was like mind blowing. It just changed everything for me. And uh, writing Rainers is where I really like, I learned this and I just couldn't believe it. So this is like a normal scenario for a person. Trotting, you're trotting, you're trotting. You ask your horse to pick up the correct lead. So you know, okay, I need to push with my outside leg and ask my horse to pick up his lead. Well, he picks up the wrong lead. So we, so we break him back to a trot and we ride and we ride and we ride. We push with the outside leg, he picks up the wrong lead. And we're like, crap, okay, the heck. So then we slow down and we push with our outside leg and then miraculously he does or does not pick up the correct lead. Okay, so let me break it down. This is what's happening. So in your horse's brain, you're trotting down the pin. He feels you pushing with his with your outside leg and he says, okay, well, I guess we have to speed up. And he starts loping. He picks up what he believes. He doesn't know if he's picking up the right lead or wrong lead. He's just loping. So he picks up the right lead, which is the incorrect lead. You wanted the left lead. But here's what happens. You released the leg pressure broke him to a trot. He says, okay, that must have been exactly what she wanted because the pressure went away when I picked up the right lead. She pushed with the right leg and the pressure went away when I picked up the right lead. So you are teaching your horse to pick up the incorrect lead. You have trained and conditioned him day after day that when you push with your leg, whatever lead he picks up, right or wrong, the pressure went away. So we have got to stop and say, okay, I don't care if it takes a hundred laps around this pin, I'm going to apply pressure with this right leg. And until he picks up the left lead, the pressure doesn't go away. And I'm not saying kick and anything like that. I apply pressure, a light amount of pressure. And I mean, just lay your hand down and that's the amount of pressure I'm applying. Because my horses have learned to yield to that pressure. But I put the pressure into my horse See, she, I just touched her. She moves her hip over. That's what you want. So I apply the pressure and I don't, on a horse I get in or a baby, it may take me 10 laps, but we break down into a trot and I ask them to lope again. And until they get there, the moment they get the correct lead, I relax and I tell them, good job. No more pressure. Okay. That's what it's about. Being super, super consistent. When I lope down that pin, I apply pressure. I'm asking my horse, encouraging to move forward, but the pressure stays steady and does not go away until he has caught the correct lead. So if we are relieving the pressure, breaking to a trot, and then bouncing them back up, we're pushing, pushing, or we're kicking. So we're, we are applying pressure and releasing. Apply, release, reply, release. You are teaching your horse that whatever lead he catches, the pressure is going to go away. So he hasn't learned left or right lead. Or sometimes he's learned that you push with this leg and he's going to catch the right lead because we've done it so many times now incorrectly with the pressure releasing that that's what he's catching. So I am a huge fan of transitions. I do a gajillion transitions a day on every single horse. And I believe that catching your leads and transitions go absolute hand in hand in fine tuning a horse to catch correct leads. So as you could see when I was loping her around the pin, when I relax in my seat, she comes down a gate. Okay. So when I sit down, she comes down a gate. That's part of our transition training. I want my horses, whenever I relax and sit in my seat, that means slow down. Because when I'm hauling ass to a barrel and I'm really, really, really pushing and running, when I sit in my seat, they melt, they get their hips underneath them, they collect, their rib cage comes up, and there's no pulling on the reins. I do not pull on the reins when I'm running. There's no, there's no whoa going on. It's, ooh, I'm sitting in my seat, and that says, okay, she says collect. This is when it's time to collect. So that's how my horses know when to rake. In doing transitions like this, I will trot my horse on the correct diagonal, apply the pressure, ask my horse to lope. He lopes around right, and then I sit down in my seat, ask him to transition down, trot a few steps, ask him to lope again. You can practice it all day long. Doing transitions work the stifles and the hocks. They help strengthen stifles, hocks. They lift the horses back. They are absolutely phenomenal for getting your horse's top line when you ask your horse to really stretch out. So transitions, if you've got a hot horse, a horse that's goofy, it's going to get a horse focused and thinking. So 
someone brings me a horse, like a really hot barrel horse, and they're just like, oh, this horse, you know, he's just crazy, blah, blah, blah. Come back in a few weeks, sucker's going to be chilled out. He's going to be focused and thinking due to transitions because I'm getting control over his mind without pulling on his face, without panicking him. All we're doing is teaching him to listen to my body. Just, just be quiet. Just pay attention. So I'm going to do a couple more transitions for you and let you see what I'm talking about. So I'm going to put... Every time you come around the first barrel, you're hammering on your horse to catch the left lead because that's our big thing. Catch the left lead when you come out of that barrel. Well, if I teach my horse that I'm loping a circle or trotting a circle to the right, and then he knows from at home all the time and in the warm-up pen, I go to a barrel race with a young horse, I do that. I try to get in the pen, and I trot a circle to the right, and then immediately I'll ask him to pick up the left lead and try to get their brain working and make everything that happens in that barrel pattern easy. I want it to all be familiar, not with the barrels necessarily, because I don't want to over drill my horse on the pattern, but I want them to know the cues and the commands and be very comfortable and never get scared. The barrel pattern is never a place where I want a horse to get scared. It's all about making the pattern fun. So the more drills I do without barrels, the more my horse is going to learn and the easier it's going to be on, on her mind to retain it and the happier she's going to be. If she's not happy, she's not going to win. She's not going to progress. She's just going to dread it. Um, this filly meets me at the gate every single day. She loves her job. She loves being worked and I really love the fact that she does and it makes me really happy and I'm excited every single day to work her because every day this filly gets a little bit better and she just enjoys, she's in a, she's joy to ride um, and, and that means something. So by making her job really, really easy um, and teaching her all this stuff dry makes her love the pattern. We do not a terribly lot amount of pattern work, but we do lots and lots and lots of drills on picking up that lead and, and quickening the feet. And I want to do a video probably next on how to quicken up your horse's feet a little bit. Um, we'll see what you guys say and what y'all um, tell me to do because y'all asked for the leads and so that's what we're here for the leads. So um, that's probably the biggest things that I see with, uh, with leads 
and if you're having trouble with leads, then have someone get off and, you know, have someone stand aside, put color boots on your horse, and see which likes crossing over. You know, see where you're posting. If you're not sure um, if you're posting properly, then get someone to help you. Um, you know, take a lesson. Have somebody point out to you if you're posting properly because some of your lead problem could be that you're just simply not coming up on the correct diagonal. So you're not freeing up the right leg because we look at the front legs, but we're focused on the back. The back legs are what's important to me on what's, which leg is in the air at what time. But the only way most people can see it, they can't feel, they're not trained to feel what the hind end's doing. They can see the frainer. Um, if you're close enough to me and Chelsea, we would love to help you. We love having company at the farm. We have a blast with our lessons. Um, if you've ever followed me and Chelsea on Snapchat, we have a heck of a time. Um, it might be a little of a crazy house, but we have so much fun. Um, you can follow Chelsea Rammer. She'll put it in. She'll put her Snapchat in the uh, comments, and mine is Katie Trimmel One, and she'll put that in the comments too. And you guys can follow us and see how much fun we have. And we definitely invite you to come ride with us and uh, and learn with us. We it's it's a party every day. We have a great time. We don't do much fun, but we have a heck of a good time doing what we do. So um, we genuinely love the horses we have in training and would love to ride with you and help you make whatever horse you have um, the best it can possibly be. And it's rodeo season, so we are taking, or it's almost rodeo season, so we are definitely going to start getting hard and heavy in the um, pre-game lessons. So if you're not positive, if you're riding to your full potential or uh, maybe you've got some fears that you want to get over and you're not sure how to do that or some little things in the pattern Then me and Chelsea would absolutely love to help you get over that and we can give you tips and tricks and how to do it and what you need to know going down the road in the heat with your horses and um, Just come see what we do and learn from us. So we love that we give lessons all the time um, All day long and then in the evenings on the weekend sometimes we do some lessons. So um, Let us know we're out of town a lot um, working horses and colts and stuff so hit us up and um, and get on the list because man we have a good time and we are taking we've got room right now for one outside horse so if you're interested in having a horse trained um, after this it probably won't be open very long but uh, give us a call and either get on the waiting list or uh, maybe your horse will be the one that gets lucky enough to get the spot right now so uh, comment on this while it's live and I'm gonna give away a hat I got some really cute hats with my K brand on it that we're gonna give away so you guys got a comment and uh, please let me know what you guys want to see next I am super excited to keep doing these for you guys and I apologize I did get it last week so um, if there's anything y'all want to see y'all feel free to pick my brain and let me know if you have any questions what bit are you riding in today what I'm riding in today um, I showed you yesterday it's a dog bone smooth dog bone mouthpiece and apparently Rose is terrified of these little butterflies that are flying around because every time I see one come near her she like throws her head and wants to attack it <laughs> and this is a German martingale I have started riding this mare in some draw reins at home um, I do want to lift her rib cage a little bit more so I'm asking her to get her head down just a tad so that is something that we're doing um, I have German Martingale on her now, and it doesn't do a lot. I don't have it real tight, but I did what something, <laughs> another, but I'm sorry, those butterflies are mean. Um, but it is a smooth mouth dog bone. And uh, the way it works is it's got, it lays on the tongue, and then the bars will work. So when I pull, this side and the tongue stays in place, and it lifts on the bar. So there's no pinching, there's no entrapping, there's no claustrophobia on the tongue. So it's a very, very mild bit. And Tori asked, are you giving pressure in the middle of the barrel or towards the back? The very back. So I'm pushing almost to the flank. As far back as my leg will go is where I want to push. So that's her command to yield to my leg is pressure back here. So pink leg is going to cross over. Push, release. Push, release. Push, release. So every stride I'm going to release. So I'll walk here. So I'm going to push, release push release so I'm relieving that pressure as soon as she yields I give it back that's how I say thank you so push 
thank you, push, thank you. And that's how she learns every single stride to move that foot over. And that will encourage her quicker to take a larger, larger lateral step, just like if you were teaching a horse to spin. We're doing that on the high end. All right, guys, thank you. If there's any other questions, feel free to comment and we will answer. All right, thank you guys. Y'all have a great day.